Welcome back to session number six. In today's class, let us get to know the continuity of the previous part of the class which we have gone through what is meant by bricks, ingredients of the bricks and how the bricks have been manufactured starting from the preparation of the clay and then subjected for the molding, further drying and next process we call it as burning. In the burning, the major thing it is to oxidize whatever the unaccounted part of the substances which are being present in the bricks to be let it off out of it. Second aspect is to check that the moisture content which are being present, which are being retained even after the drying, they have to be expelled out of it. For that particular usage, we need to go for the burning process. Another aspect is burning also imparts binding of the compounds to make a harder portion of the mass. So that the burnt portion of the bricks adds much more strength and durability. For that particular usage is burning has certain optimal conditions. We call it as underburnt or overburnt or maybe the rightly burnt type of the bricks. What is meant by underburnt type of the bricks? The term underburnt it refers to the bricks which are being placed at the top of the any of the oven large shape. We call it as a kiln or maybe a clam type where it is not completely subjected for the burning. Hence we call it as underburnt type of the bricks. If the bricks are being burnt maximum more than 800 degrees Celsius or 1100 or 1200, they become much more brittle, the dark in appearance and they can also be broken up. It adds the brittleness to the brick and the degradation in thermal medium will be taking place to the fast extent. So therefore, in that particular aspect, we should carefully select what is the temperature conditions to be maintained, okay. Especially the clay and alumina fuse above the temperature greater than uh, 600, where we call it as a vitrified type of the clay brick. When they have been fused to each other, it also has some properties where the clay as well as alumina content upon fusing it and even the silica content is also present. If the temperature has been raised more than 1000, therefore silica will be transformed into the crystalline part of the glass condition and therefore the glass conditions when it has been set to hard again the properties tend to change. The composition of the properties of the brick tends to change after the burning. Hence care has to be taken that optimal condition has to be maintained for the brick. In the burning process there are two types of the system. One we call it as burning through the clamps, another is burning through the kilns. Clamp means whatever the bricks which are being stacked out in an open medium, they will be closed on the top and they have been fed with the fuel layers. Fuel layers, what are those fuel? materials. The materials like dried or decayed part of the wood or a log or maybe the leaves, whatever the cotton waste or any of the materials which are normally available, which are low in cost, they are being used as a raw material like a fuel. Whereas in the case of the kilns and all, log of wood is also utilized along with some sort of the fuel. That we have in the case of the practice of the kilns. In the kiln, there are different types. What are those? Let us get to know one by one concept. First, let us go to take on for the clamp type of the burning. What is meant by clamp type of the burning? Here, the bricks are thatched out in the form of an inclined position where the inclined angle is relatively equivalent to 15 degrees slope. In order to make ensure that the proper burning, the 
brick earth has been made first and later on you can see these are the ground level conditions partially it has been attached here where you can see the arrangements have been made in the alternative layers of fuel and bricks alternative layers of the fuel bricks fuel bricks like that so on so that in order to ensure that the burning process takes place and the relative consecutive part of the bricks are also been loaded here one layer by layer we call it as a cell media here you can see that the fuel material is been placed and therefore brick layer a five consecutive layers thickness next followed by again the fuel then brick layers and fuel and covered up with the earthen material why it has to be covered up with the earthen material in order to make sure that the complete burning process takes place and the brick is said to be utilized for the construction purpose another thing we need to think about what kind of the burning process it has been ensuring obviously a clamp type of the burning mainly ensures the brick wall which is made up with the mud and the earthen media which has been used for a supporting part the next later on aspect is how the burning process takes place it may takes place for a period of even 15 days or 20 days carried out even for a period of more than one month also therefore in this regard what is the quality of the burnt bricks obtained so that you need to utilize it for the construction purpose that has to be taken into consideration what are those mainly if the bricks are said to be in a proper burnt condition therefore you can utilize it for the construction phase if they are been over burned especially in this case is what happens the over burning process takes place under burning process takes place here also at the top one more layer if it has been placed over it likewise care has to be taken what are those advantages in the clamp burning in the clamp burning you can see that almost like a 28000 to 1 lakh bricks can also be utilized but it is meant only for the small scale construction usages not for the large scale if it is required for the large scale construction purpose then we have to go for the kiln okay it is a large scale oven usually maintained for the burning of the bricks what are those stay tuned for it let me complete the clamp burning advantages and disadvantages clamp burning has also certain advantages it is economical in nature and no skill labor has been required the ground molded bricks can be utilized for the clamp burning and what the, whatever the quality of the bricks that is been obtained it is of a quite good quality or we call it as a moderate quality but what is the disadvantages what are the different cases obviously it requires lot of time also we cannot say that whether it is a intermittent or the continuous process the amount of the fuel that you are going to use it has to be make sure that the brick has been burnt properly and next another condition is fire regulation is not completely possible here we cannot able to control the fire only if you wanted to control the fire you need to have the fire control or the regulators sometimes what happened fire breaks a part and therefore the clamp burning which is taking place may also tend to crack and immediately what happens they tend to collapse that phenomena shall be existing in the clamp burning so that in order to safeguard the earthen material like a bund or any other things is been utilized as a supporting part of the media next another thing it is 
quality as I said it is not completely a uh, uniform in nature because when it has been uh, taken out there are bricks which have been distorted also the edges will be broken or blunt in nature that has to be taken care when removing the bricks whereas in the case of the next part we call it as a kiln or a burning media there you can able to completely regulate it what is that let us come to know kill means the process of burning the bricks in a extreme temperature in a closed portion or a closed wall condition we call it as a kill it is like an oven now in the kill there are two types one is based on the continuous mode of an operation another is intermittent mode of operation which is classified continuous kill and then intermittent kill what is meant by continuous kill the mode of operation has been continuous the bricks which are been dried they have been taken they have to be loaded and then the bricks are subjected for preheating finally flue gas will also be passed the heating portion takes place then subjected for the cooling and drying then unloading condition takes place if these loading and unloading condition takes place over a certain period of the time one after the other then we call it as intermittent kill if all this process takes place simultaneously in nature one batch of the brick has been passed over this next again another batch so therefore the operation mode is continuous in nature hence we call it as a continuous kill okay here we have come across the intermittent kill how they have been used this is a good example for the intermittent kill where you can see spaces are being provided in the intermittent kill normally it is adopted in the villages where completely a portion of the voidness they have been given or a space has been left for the fuel to be placed and ignition to be carried out so that the flue gases and the flames shall pass through the layers of the bricks this phenomena is being carried out where you can see the door is being provided towards the peripheral ends towards the peripheral ends and you can see the portion for the usage of the fuel material which are being placed here also the gap way which is being uh, provided or here it is being created it is mainly for that particular purpose finally the bricks are been burnt and here you can able to regulate the amount of the heat this method is been adopted even in the case of the table molded type of the bricks also or even in the case of the machine molded type of the bricks excluding the plastic dry type of the bricks because it does not require any burning process it only requires a certain period of time for the drying and then directly taken off for the industries next type of the kiln which i am going to introduce it is the bull trench type of the kiln what is meant by bull trench type of the kiln how it has been utilized it is a continuous in operation where the loading unloading preheating burning cooling everything takes place in a continuous stretch where you can see the different sorts of the platforms or the walls are being created which is being taken one after the other the flue gases is made to escape out of the chimney itself only this part of the cooling phenomena which is carried out in a trench portion trench means what the digged portion of the ground in the shape of an oval 
or an elliptical in shape that kind of the kill we call it as a trench type of the kill where in the earlier cases the bulls were ox were also used for carrying out the operations hence through the layman's term it has been referred as a bull trench type of the kill but in uh, normal conditions uh, all the people will be working no cows or maybe oxes are not been used only for uh, small scale purpose they are been utilized not for the large scale because if you need to transfer it from the one place like a remote extreme place to the towns or the cities and all you require trucks or maybe lorries for that to carry out the burnt portion of the bricks which are being cooled in nature okay and what are the advantages obviously here the major advantage if you come across in the bull trench type of the kiln the bricks obtained are completely heated in conditions which are optimal in nature no underburnt no overburnt in nature and which are been optimal what is the optimal range 600 to 1100 that is an optimal range not more than that therefore the advantage is is since all the process like cooling preheating everything is being carried out we have like a 1 2 3 4 5 6 and again 1 2 3 4 5 6 we have that part of the platforms or the baffle type where the process or the mode of an operation is being carried out in a continuous manner henceforth this type of the kill has widely utilized and it is completely a large scale in operation not a small scale in operation mind it but here another requirement is skilled supervision labor is required or necessary why what is the reason because all the operation has to be carried out simultaneously in nature care has to be taken for the regulation or the control not like in the case of the clamp burning like you keep the fuel and all or place the fuel ignite it let the flames began to burn the bricks and when it is completely off you leave it for the cooling purpose and then you take it off not like that here you need to regulate it that is the major difference you find out between either in the case of the intermittent type of the kilns or even in the case of the bull trench type of the kiln i hope so you might have understood what are the different types of an operations are being carried out if it is circular in nature if the kiln is circular in nature what is that condition we call it as a hoffman's type of the kiln that is also similar to that of an bull trench type of the kiln where completely a cylindrical type of the huge contain like how you're going to see like in a metallic water tank and all similarly in that fashion itself only it will be kept beneath the ground surface and the operation mode is being carried out hope so you have understood the concepts of the clamp burning the bull trench type of the kiln and further even the intermittent type of the kiln also okay now let us get to know when these burning process is being complete what are the next stages of an uh, mode of an operation where it has been utilized therefore we have a certain things what are those kindly stay for a while we have requirements of bricks what are those requirements of the bricks after all the process is being carried out the requirement is first thing shape as well as the size of the brick when you see the brick itself only shape and size it matters so much obviously for a non mortar type of the brick the shape is always rectangular in nature okay they are rectangular in nature whose dimensions are the length will be 19 centimeter or 190 mm the breadth as well as the height will also be 9 centimeter by 9 centimeter we call it as 19 centimeter by 9 centimeter by 9 centimeter we call it as a complete brick if it has been mortar when a mortar is applied therefore the thickness of 1 mm is been added up for all those things 
therefore it is 20 by 10 by 10 centimeters there are uh, varieties of the specifications even for the bricks also according to the manufacturing process of the different industries they may be 23 by 10 by 10 also that can also be used or maybe here 19 by 9 by 4 or 20 by 10 in by 5 where the height of the bricks will be reduced to 5 centimeters okay now shape you have seen it is a rectangular and it has to be sharp edges not distorted next second thing it is regarding the fire resistance if you take in the case of the fire resistance it has to be more resistant and least conductivity because thermal reaction or the we call it as thermal reactivity should be very much lesser third one if the brick is being striked against each other it should give a clear ringing sound so we call it as a soundness of the brick should give the clear ringing sound next thing if the brick is being dropped from a one meter height it should not break into pieces it should not break into pieces so when dropped at one meter height okay breakages shall not tend to persist no breakages next thing if it has been immersed in the water completely should not become like a soil condition it should have a minimum capacity of the water absorption sorry or maybe in the certain cases maximum capacity of the water absorption shall be not more than 20 percent what happens if it has been more than 20 percent dampness condition tends to prevail and the durability will be less enough harmful ingredients will tend to react therefore chemical reaction takes place for this particular usages the brick requirement shall be restricted for the water absorption only for this next there is also another set of the conditions maybe in the case of the usage appearance in the case of the shape and size we have completed the hardness content okay hardness take a brick scratch it on the surface if it does not leave any sorts of an impression then brick is said to be sufficiently hard if the nail part of an uh, scratchings where the impression has been left there itself only then we call it as the less hardness content of the brick because it has to be sufficiently hard in nature again if the pebbles or any of the ingredients are being present if it is distorted easily it can be tend to break up so these are all the some of the good requirements of the bricks and they should also possess the strength because strength is in another condition how much it is it has to be greater than 5 newton per millimeter square crushing strength it has to be 5 or maybe we call it as greater than 5.5 newton per millimeter square another thing soluble salts it should be free from soluble salts otherwise it causes if not it causes efflorescence so these are the particular requirements of the bricks now when we come across for the requirements of the bricks it has to be practicably applicable 
even for any sorts of a low scale, medium scale or for the large scale construction purpose or the activities. Hence, these are the conditions to be clearly satisfied. In addition to that, if any tests are to be required, what are those? I will be going to explain you now. We have the field and laboratory test on bricks. What are those? First is compressive strength test. You will have this part of the test in building materials and testing laboratory. Second one, water absorption test. Test for efflorescence, we call it as efflorescence test. Next one, we come across the dimension and warpage. dimension and warpage. Let me take on compressive strength test. In this part of the test, normally applicable for the laboratory conditions and even for the field testing, whichever the bricks is being brought, a layer of the mortar is being applied on the top surface of the brick. It is made dry and finally, it is subjected for uh, testing machine, we call it as compression testing machine, where the two plates are being placed one above the other in between the bricks, okay, the brick is placed in between, it is like a sandwich. Next step is uh, rate of uniform load is applied. How much is the rate? Uh, 3.5 Newton per mm square. the load has been applied. Gradually it has been applied, not like a sudden load or an impact, gradual load has been applied and the process is being carried out till the bricks tends to break. The cracks will tend to develop there where the load which is imposed on the bricks reaching to the maximum extent, finally the bricks tends to crack, that will be the maximum part where we call it as the compression part of the bricks which has been taking place for it. Therefore, in this particular cases, we also go for classifying. If the strength or what we call it as compressive strength, it is nothing but the load by area, okay. Stress is equal to load by area, same thing, compressive strength is equal to load by area, whatever the load has been applied. That's why we call it as a Newton area in terms of an mm square. If the compressive strength of the brick is less than 7 Newton per mm square, therefore we call it as a lower class of the bricks. If it is in the range of 7 to 14 Newton per mm square, 7 to 14 Newton per mm square, then we going to classify it as class A type of the bricks, class A type of the bricks. If it is being greater than 14 Newton per mm square, then we call it as class AA type of the bricks. 
greater than 14 Newton per millimeter square. This is a one sort of a classification as per the requirement of Indian standards. Next, water absorption test. What is meant by water absorption? Take a brick, immerse in the water for a period of 24 hours. But before that, there are certain things to do. What are those? Take a brick, weigh it up. What is the weight of the brick? You call it as A. Okay. And then, initial weight. Next, when you immerse in the water, after the 24 hours, you need to clean it up. And therefore, again, you need to weigh it. You call it as B. Because what has a final weight. Now, what you need to do? Obviously, when it has been immersed, some portion of, since there is a porous content present in the bricks, it will tend to absorb. The absorption is required, determined in terms of in percentage. So, therefore, B minus A divided by A. Okay. So, this part we come across in the case of multiply by 100, we are going to give you the what is the percentage of the water absorption. Okay. What is the weight which has been taken? Final minus initial weight divided by A, we call it as what is the initial weight that has been having. The ratio of that will tend to give it. So, this is the another thing we come across in the case of the testing of the water absorption. Next, efflorescence test. Before moving to that, water absorption test, the maximum what amount of water absorption should be the range of 20 to 22 percent, not more than that. If that is more means, it will tend to decay. Next, efflorescence test. Some of the salts solution has been made prepared and the brick has been immersed to see or to check that whether any of the white patches are being formed. Maybe in the acid or an alkali solution how the brick has been placed, whether there is any of the certain reactions leading to the formation of an white patches or the salty type of an appearance. If that persists in nature, then the brick is said to be a fluorescence in nature. Okay? So, it should not be more than 50 percent roughly for a worst case conditions. If it has been more than 50 percent, therefore, it cannot be used. That is another criteria. Next, dimension and warpage. Dimension and warpage means bricks of like in the portion like a 190 by 9 by 9. Continuously, you lay the bricks in a row wise like this. Check for the what is the dimensions and how whether it has been of the same or unique or the uniform size itself only or not. That is a another criteria for the selection of the bricks. Normally, we have especially in the case of the dimensions, sometimes it has been ranging from 3680 mm to 3920 mm. Whereas, the width will be 1740 mm to 1860 mm and height will be 1740 mm to same 1860 mm. This is the dimensions and the warpages. So, length and height. And length is equal to 3680 to 4, 3920 mm. Continuously, it is being placed over one part to another. Okay? So, these are the certain tests which are being applied, especially for the bricks, compressive strength, water absorption, efflorescence, dimension, and warpage. What are those other tests? Soundnet test hardness portion of the test. Okay. Since the compressive and water absorption test, as I have already mentioned that this is also a criteria for the good requirements of the brick. Soluble salts is mainly for the efflorescence because when it has been immersed in water, it has to be subjected for the dry shade 
if the color has been developed with the white patches then we call it as an efflorescence and it should not be more than that in which cases 50 percent of the salt solution shall not be tend to absorb for it that is another criteria okay hope so you have understand the requirements as well as the test on the bricks now let us go for the classification of the bricks how they have been classified as i have told that there is uh, based on the compressor strength also they can be classified we have other sorts of classification what is that a last bit of the bricks let us get to know We have two sorts of classification, one is burnt and another is unburnt bricks. Burnt bricks, well it is subjected for the burning. Unburnt bricks which is only subject till up to the drying process, not subjected for the burning process. That is only used for making of a temporary structure. Let us go for the classification of the burnt bricks. They have been classified into four parts. So first class bricks, how the students score a good marks, distinctions like that we have first class. Next second class bricks, second class bricks. Next we also have third class bricks. And finally, the fourth class bricks. Let us take on. What is meant by the first class type of the bricks? They are completely a table bounded bricks. Having sharp edges, no any sorts of in the distorted. They are well burnt in nature. They are commonly used for superior works which are permanent in nature which are permanent in nature this kind of the bricks we call it as a first class type of the bricks okay they may be a square in nature but straight no blunt edges completely a sharp type of an edges next second class type of the bricks what are those these are also the ground molded type, not as the not about the table. They are completely a ground molded, ground molded. Slightly, they have a distorted edges. Hence, a layer of the mortar is required, and it is a must. They can also be utilized for the works which are at a moderate rate also. And finally, these bricks are commonly utilized for the usage of the permanent structures also. But what happens if it has to be utilized layer of mortar is necessary. It is necessary. This type of the bricks we call it as second class type of the bricks next these are well burnt but they are distorted in nature next sort of the classification is third class type of the bricks what are this kind of the bricks both of them they are burnt in the kilns first class and second class here I'll write it they are burnt in the kilns third class it is burnt in the clamps that is the difference if they have been burnt in the clamps obviously when it has been uh, staked out what happens some of the edges are not uniform in nature blunt edges hence they are utilized for the temporary part of the works or the we call it as a construction works normally where the rainfall is less 
in that particular area they are used for the temporary works like compound walls or any other things that is temporary in nature if they are going to require like that next we also come across for the fourth class type of the bricks these are clamp burnt or what we call it as a over burnt type of the bricks when we call it as a over burnt type of the bricks you cannot utilize it for a, a superior work nor for the permanent sort of the things it has to be utilized mainly for the aggregate purpose in addition with respect to the lime or maybe for any sorts of mortar the mixture of the sand cement and water so these are the fourth class type of the bricks which we go for classifying because they are completely irregular lumps the rest, uh, left out residue which are present in the kilns or maybe in the case of the clamps itself only they are completely dark in color and they are used as an aggregates maybe in the case of the covering material they are utilized so these are the some of the usages if we go into take it it is in the case of the foundations they are utilized as a filling material and even for the floors also surki mortar or what we come across in certain cases filling up of the materials being carried out by this kind of the bricks we call it as a fourth class type of the bricks in uh, is specification there are different types that i'll be going to discuss in the interaction part of the class where we have a live sort of an interaction so much more things are to be dealt and discuss and i hope so you have understand the type of the burning good requirements as well as test on the bricks lastly to the classification of the bricks because these are the main requirements you need to remember and hopefully you have understood the concept let us meet in the next part of the class with another new topic and still then stay tuned for it remember all those concepts and all the best for the next class thank you